What's up guys, I am standing outside of the house because our home shelter lockdown has been removed and the gyms are open and I'm heading back to the gym. Before I did, I thought, well, let me think about all my homegrown workout heroes that I've been, you know, guiding at home in their home gyms. And before you go back to the gym, there's a few things that you should know and do. So, what's the first thing? Well, it depends where you've been at for this home lockdown, because we have a few different categories of people, right? So probably your secret gym ninjas, right? I know you. You still had gym access or you had some secret passage to a gym and nothing has really changed for you. So this doesn't really apply, continue as is. Next we have our home gym pioneers. You guys are the ones that went and scavenged all the weight equipment so a lot of people couldn't have any. <laughs> Likely you still were able to load the same and lift the same or use compound movements that were similar to the ones you were doing before. So you can likely just continue as is. Um, my two groups that I really wanna talk about though are my, my home groom, uh, warriors that were doing all the body weight band workouts and then the group that just said eh, I'm not gonna do anything at all you are my Netflix and chill group you just laid and submerged into the couch for months so what happens what happens when you when this happens and you have this do you lose your gains how fast do you lose your gains how fast do they come back what is to expect going back to the gym and we can get a little bit of insight from science of like kind of the rate of loss. So in Starin in 91 did a study. It was with women. They were kind of trained, not very much. They, they had them squat for 20 weeks, two times a week. And then they, they wanted to detrain them. So they told them don't work out for 30 weeks and we're gonna see what happens. Over that 30 weeks, they lost 13% of their strength and lost about 14% of their muscle mass gains. They were doing completely nothing. This was for seven months. They brought them back to work out, same routine. In six weeks, they regained that progress in strength and muscle gain. So it comes back really, really fast and you don't lose as much as you, as you would think you would lose. Now, that's gonna depend. If you did absolutely nothing, you probably lost more. If also you were highly trained, you probably lost more if you were doing nothing. Now, if you weren't that trained and you were able to do something, you probably won't have as much drop off and you probably will come back a lot faster as well. So have a lot of different areas of who's gonna improve quick, but what I would tell you is that there is such a thing as muscle memory and your gains will return quickly, but there's a few things going into the gym about detraining we need to know. For one, uh, you have a high propensity for muscle soreness because new training can be very damaging. And why is that bad? Well, it can create a lot of fatigue and, and decrease recovery capacity. So you go back your first day, you're pumped up and you're gonna train really, really hard, or you're gonna be in the hole for a week because you just buried yourself and trained too hard. Um, you're also, a benefit is that you can be very sensitive to training stimulus. It's like being a newbie all over again. So you lift a little bit of weight and you're gonna just grow and respond because your body's like, oh yeah, we did this before and those gains start returning. So you don't have to do a lot and you'll get a lot in return. But if you do too much, it could go the other way and you can drop off and have way too much fatigue. So this is what we wanna balance out when we're thinking about returning to the gym and having the most progress possible. Another thing too is learning motor patterns. Uh, we, like especially with strength, so strength is very specific to what you do and the loading you use. So strength is probably what you're gonna notice drops off the quickest because it is so specific. Um, just like if you were benching 300 pounds for five reps, um, if you stop doing that and you just went to push-ups, well, you're not gonna have as much uh, ability to go back and use that same type of load. So, and, or another example would be like shooting free throws. You know, you can get really good at learning that motor pattern of shooting a free throw. You stop doing it for a while, not gonna be that great at returning to it. So you kinda have to reintegrate the nervous system to using those same muscles and moving in that same pattern. So if you're going back to the gym and using brand new exercises, or exercises that you haven't done in a really long time, that's when you need to be more cautious. So, my tenets for you of returning to the gym. 
use about one third to two thirds the volume that you normally would do. So if you're normally training six days a week, that might be moving it down to four days a week. If you're doing four days a week, possibly going down to three days a week. So what I usually do is like push pull legs. So if I haven't been able to really do that as much, I can go to like an upper lower split. Training four days a week, give me enough rest time. <clears throat> Other things too would be how many sets to do for muscle group. So we kind of know off research about 10 sets per muscle group is a good starting point. Um, since you are brand new back to the gym, I would say six to eight sets per muscle group would be a really good starting point. And we know you want to train about twice a week. So however that breaks down for you is what I would do. So you could do, you know, three sets, three to four sets for a muscle group on one day, three to four sets for a muscle group on another day. Upper lower split might work really well in that case. How hard should we train though? How much effort should we put into those sets? And I would be cautious going to failure because failure training does produce a lot of fatigue and you just don't need that much stimulus left for this first week. It's an acclimation week. So don't think you need to go all out. And trust me, I want you to train hard and we're gonna train hard. Don't think I'm going soft on you, but we just wanna hold off these first weeks and get the most from the least. So I'd say on compound movements, if you haven't been able to do them, do like two to three reps shy of failure, you know? Get the most out of it. On your isolation movements, movements you're familiar with, uh, you can take those sets closer to failure or if it's safe, you could go to failure. But on the other movements, I would hold off and just wait. Um, also, on exercise selection, just be safe. That's all I would really recommend for you. If it's a movement that feels really off and shaky, just take it slow with it. Um, another component too with the programming is timing because some of these gyms are only giving you an hour to train. So you might not be able to do all your eight exercises that take three minutes between all your sets. So that's when I would utilize using like a zigzag approach where you could do say, go to a leg extension, then go to a leg curl. Not almost like a superset, but giving you some rest periods um, or supersetting might even be a viable option as, as well for you. Now, if you're like, man, I'm, John, I'm trying to do 10 exercises and two sets of each one and I just can't fit all in. Well, just pick less exercises and do a few more sets for those. So rather than doing squats and leg press, just do squats and do a few extra sets. So I think that will give you a good tenets of like how to start out your first weeks. Um, then just auto-regulate. You know, if you, if you get extremely sore, it's okay to take an extra rest day. Um, as far as progressing forward after this initial couple weeks, I would just work on building up that effort level and stay with your same volume level. So start, start adding loads, start adding reps again, approaching close to failure. Keep doing so until you go to failure and back to your normal effort level. Then in your next training cycle, you could bring volume back up to where you normally would be at. But like I said, guys, get the most from the least right now. But that's it, guys. I wanted to lead you from our homegrown training series back to the gym. I'm heading back to the gym, so please, if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments below. There's a link to the article where I give you a sample training plan of returning to the gym, and I outline all these tenets for you. So anyway, till next time.